Regional Coordinator for the United Nations Capital Development Fund uh, for Asia. And I'm pleased to welcome you uh, to the webinar in partnership with the United Nations Development Program, where we're going to be uh, sharing lessons learned and best practices around our joint pilot on digitizing payments of cash-based interventions in Afghanistan. But before we get into introducing all our panels and introducing the agenda of today's webinar, I would like to give a very, very warm welcome to uh, Sorajo Butsuro, Kova, sorry, Sorajo, <laughs> the acting resident rep uh, re representative of UNDP in Afghanistan, to give you some uh, um, the welcome for the uh, webinar today. Sorajo, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, <clears throat> uh, Maria. Um, it's really honored to be in this webinar. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon to everyone who, whenever you are, uh, where you're based. Um, thank you really much for the organizing them, uh, this event to the UNCDF team and um, UNDP team in Afghanistan. Um, it's also a pleasure to be here to share our experiences um, in Afghanistan, which comes with the joint initiative of UNDP, UNCDF, uh, in the uh, taking care of uh, digitizing the payment in Afghanistan. As all of you are aware, when the crisis hit in 2021, August, uh, we left without any tools. And um, uh, for us, it was very important to come up with a new way of the working, to be more advanced, to be a smart, and bring uh, the innovative tools and mechanism which will help us to reach vulnerable population, particularly uh, women in Afghanistan. And digital technologies help us a lot. We have been able to reach um, almost um, 15,000 of the beneficiaries with a total amount of the $1 million. And we are scaling up continuously to support of the, all the vulnerable people. We are committed to continue to provide um, uh, all our services and scale up when it comes to the digitalization in Afghanistan, not only when it's related to the cash payment, but also looking wider scale uh, when we can apply as much as possible tools and mechanism. As Maria already has mentioned, we would like today to share with you our good practices um, innovative practices, what we have been applying, but also to hear from you what you can add to our experiences, what we can take from you uh, beyond of what we are doing, what mechanism we can improve, what else could be done in Afghanistan. I'm really looking forward to, um, for this webinar. And um, this webinar, it's only starting point. We are planning to have a couple of the webinars uh, um, uh, in the future where we also will be sharing our experiences and also demonstrating how we are dealing with these uh, cases on the ground. I'm looking forward to hear from you. And thank you very much, Maria, and, and all of you to being here and helping us to reach and our goals and to reach the, of all the population of Afghanistan. Thank you. Maria, over to you. Thank you so much, Soraya, for uh, such wonderful words. And uh, the, mutual is, uh, the feeling is mutual. Uh, it's an honor to be able to have been able to work uh, closely with UNDP in this, in this project. And uh, we've learned so much. Uh, and that we're looking forward to uh, share all those learnings today uh, with colleagues that are uh, joining us from Afghanistan and, and I would say all over the world. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to see that we have almost uh, 80 people online. So thank you so much for your attendance today. Now let's go, maybe uh, let's start um, uh, projecting the presentation, please. Um, and so I'm going to just very, start with a very, very uh, short uh, presentation before I introduce my uh, the panelists, the fellow panelists 
uh, in the um, in the uh, to the webinar. So let's go to the next slide. So today we have uh, drafted a very uh, very wonder uh, an agenda that starts first. Let's go to the next slide. <laughs> first, we start with um, with the main results of the pilot. Okay, then that's going to be given by me, very short uh, and sweet. Then uh, we're going to talk about uh, where I'm going to introduce our uh, speakers or panelists. At that time, I'm going to take just one moment of your time to ask the speakers to uh, put up all their cameras on so that we have an opportunity to take a picture of everybody that is uh, online uh, with this, well, the speakers online. Then um, after that, we're gonna start uh, our panel discussions. We're gonna focus on the success stories and the lessons learned, but also we're gonna talk a little bit about what are the perspectives and the potential of these types of experiences to scale up in Afghanistan. Uh, then we're going to open the floor for a questions and answer session. I would encourage everybody online to please uh, submit your questions on, on the chat. Uh, and then we will be uh, um, getting those questions as they come and then uh, sort of like um, group them if you want. Uh, if they if there are lots so that it's easier for us to answer them and then very, very uh, short, I uh, will be uh, providing some closing remarks. So now let's go to the next slide. Um, so, so this journey actually store, uh, started with UNDP about a year ago. And I remember when we first started the conversations around digitizing payments in Afghanistan, um wasn't uh, an easy task and and but one a, a big challenge that i that we really wanted to take on as we uh, are convinced about the the power and the um, the need uh and the benefits that digitizing payments can bring uh to the country and so here uh what we've been doing over the past year or so has been uh working with seven different international uh, international ngos uh in the country um and so some of the the representatives uh are here for care international but we also work from uh, norwegian church aid danish refugee council islamic relief worldwide swedish committee for afghanistan action aid and action against hunger and we are working together with them and with seven diff different financial service providers, uh, including ABA, RSP, MPISA, Hesape, My Money, Momo, and the Sanford Bank, uh, supporting them to basically digitize uh, cash-based interventions in around the provinces that you see on, la uh, on the screen. Then... Uh, together with uh, the INGOs and the seven financial service providers, we help them to identify the best delivery channels or digital delivery channels available in the market and the best ones are taking into consideration specific needs of the population that we wanted to target with, um, with the cash-based interventions. So accounting or delivery channels that were able to account for barriers like the lack of uh, um, of uh, on, of an ID or the lower digital uh, financial uh, literacy of um, of the beneficiaries, uh, mobility restrictions or the inf insufficient infrastructure at the last mile, in particular when it comes to network coverage. Some of these barriers, as you know, are more. Are, are, I mean, affect everybody in Afghanistan, but specifically affect more women uh, than they do uh, for men. We do know that uh, to start, for example, the baseline in terms of literacy in general for women in Afghanistan is lower than that for men. And that therefore uh, that has consequences also in the levels of uh, financial and digital literacy that they have, that they can use then to access these types of products. But not only that, we also, uh, something that is very important in the case of Afghanistan is the lack of ID as well, which uh, although there has been a lot of progress in that, um, in that respect, there's still a lot of, um, I mean, a lot of people and more women than men that are affected by this, uh, by this uh, barrier. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so I don't want to 
um, talk, uh, give uh, more deeper thoughts on that. Then another thing that we supported um, partners with the INGOs, the FSPs was also to uh, build the financial and digital capabilities of the, of the beneficiaries to access the transfers. And then last but not least, we also provided, um, I mean, we, we, we wanna, or some support to some of the uh, partners around building partnerships to bring more innovations and to see how can we, for example, think about other delivery channels or using other rails to uh, for, um, for uh, digital payments difference from the conventional ones. Uh, we're gonna talk more a little bit about that as well. And also about how we are embarking in some um, work that will help us through uh, data and um, or analysis to get some more lights into what, where those beneficiaries are and what they really need. Let's go to the next slide. Those, now let's go to maybe the key results and as Rayo uh, mentioned some of them, but I just wanted to highlight the, uh, some other key ones. First, as Rayo rightly pointed out, um, together the seven uh, INGOs and uh, seven uh, financial service providers were able to distribute one close to $1 million in cash uh, using digital uh, channels. 15,000 people, were reached through uh, these div uh, digital uh, channels and with financial literacy um, training, but also all out of these 15,000 people, 3,000 of them uh, were women uh, who also received payments via digital channels and uh, financial literacy. We are hoping to increase those numbers, in particular the ones of women uh, going forward. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about that in depth. And we're also able to test or um, to use uh, six different uh, digital payment solutions. And those range from prepaid cards, e-vouchers and wallets, QR codes, um, e-tokens, and just uh, Afpay Af cards as well. Then one of the biggest things that I, I really like to mention is how these uh, new ways of uh, delivering cash uh, able or not new because it's not really the <laughs> um, We were able to reduce the cost uh, of the transfers by 30%. And if we extrapolate or if we make the calculations about the potential savings for the entire humanitarian um, industry or uh, colleagues, there it's it's huge. It's it's huge. Uh, it's, it's a huge savings, and savings that are more importantly always translated to the beneficiaries, and that's where we really want our money to go to. And then uh, another big thing, another big result of the of the of the um, of the pilot was that we were able to reduce the time that. Uh, someone gets their cash or their money from seven days to 48 hours. And this is a uh, critical because uh, time is one of those uh, key um, or the time for a transfer is one of those key um, attributes of the digital payment uh, that will that is uh, uh, that will make a difference for the beneficiary. And in particular, when it's about um, uh, giving um, the food for your kids, basically. Uh, it's about uh, life or death. So it's, uh, it's one of the key attributes that we need to uh, look at as well. So with that, uh, I would like to welcome to our panelists today. We go to the next slide. Uh, we have um, been able to gather to convene uh, a group that is representative of uh, the different uh, stakeholders that participated in the pilot. Uh, from one hand, we had representative from the INGOs, namely CARE International, but also Danish Refugee Council. And then we also have representatives uh, from the other side of the, the coin, uh, representatives from the financial service providers, three of the seven that um, uh, participated. So we have representatives from Islamic Bank of Afghanistan, uh, Hesape, and Empaisa. But before we start, I would like to please ask all um, the panelists, uh, my colleagues from UNDP, to please turn on your video. 
so that we can just uh, quickly do um, uh, a snapshot um, of your of your yeah. Thank you so much, all the panelists. If we can have it in the um, let me add it here, and we're gonna make the Humatula. Uh, can you please turn on your video very quickly? Oh, thank you, Tahir. Uh, Ikhmatula. Oh, Ikhmatula is not there. <laughs> okay, let's, uh, good. Okay, colleagues, thank you so much. And with no further ado, now let's, uh, I wanna welcome uh, the panelists. And if you want, please just um, leave your video turned on, okay? And uh, we're going to maybe um, we project the presentation. Okay. So I'd like to welcome again to the panelists, as I was telling you before, I have colleagues uh, from the different INGOs and the FSP. So from Care International, please turn on your video as I start mentioning you, uh, Mohammed. Uh, from Care International, then I have Ihmatula from Danish Refugee Council. I have Nusrat from Islamic Bank of Afghanistan. Uh, Nigel, uh, Nigel, sorry, Nigel <laughs> from Hesape, and then Sharif from Mpaisa. Um, maybe uh, just a quick introduction, uh, colleagues, uh, for others that are online. Just introduce yourself and uh, your um, your um, your position in the organization that you that you represent. And uh, before we start, please over to you. So maybe we can start with Care International. Uh, uh, my name is Mohammed Tahir, project manager for our body project, uh, Care International. Thank you, Mohammed. Uh, now let's go to Danish Refugee Council. Uh, hello, everyone. This is uh, Hikmat Hassan, the Economic Recovery Manager for Danish Refugee Council. Thank you. Abadi project. Thank you, Hikmatullah. Uh, now let's go to Nusrat. I think you're on mute. Are you there or not? <laughs> okay, let's, uh, well, well, you unmute yourself. Let's go to Nigel. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. Nigel Pont, I'm an advisor to the chairman at Hassanpe. Thank you so much, Nigel. Uh, Sharif. Hello, everyone. This is Sharif Uddin, uh, <clears throat> Head of Operations, MPESA, Frusha. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Sharif. Thank you very much, everybody, uh, to all our panelists for joining us today. And with that, I would like to maybe um, start with some questions uh, to the panelists. Uh, let's go to the next slide so that um, participants online are able to see some of the key, if you want, key data that we were able to collect. So, I mean, from, from the pilot, basically. So. This is a question uh, for Care International. This is a question for, um, let me see. Oh, <laughs> for Mohammed. So, so Mohammed, if you can turn on your camera. So during this pilot, Care International was able to digitize a volume of almost a hundred thousand. Uh, dollars in transactions for 621 beneficiaries. Yet I know, I mean, the operations of Care International in Afghanistan are 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 are, are huge, and um, and they do, and you do, um, you do many cash transfers in addition to those uh, done under the framework of Abade, right? Uh, now, tell me, I'd like to hear more from your perspective. What are these positive aspects of this of the pilot uh, with UNDP um, as compared, if you want, to other delivery channels used by your organization for cash disbursement? Uh, 
thank you very much, uh, Maria. First of all, uh, thank you for organizing this wonderful webin webinar. Uh, I believe this is uh, uh, indeed a good opportunity to share our experience, uh, lessons learned, to uh, further promote uh, and uh, scale up uh, digitization for all cash-based interventions. Uh, well, Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I believe people are uh, attending this webinar from different uh, places. Uh, uh, digitization was a, a wonderful like uh, experience uh, for Care International. As you said, uh, uh, Care is implementing uh, more than 35 projects uh, in different uh, sectors uh, and covering a wide range of interventions. Of course, we have uh, different types of uh, cash-based interventions. So we're using different mediums and modalities for uh, uh, cash disbursement. Uh, piloting this uh, digitization, the impact was the first thing, like uh, we moved from the manual, uh, like uh, procedures of uh, documentation, database management to system-based, which is uh, uh, good in quality as well as in speed, uh, also promoting transparency and uh, uh, the uh, acceptance and uh, like the trust of the local communities increased our the payment. And uh, as well as uh, the risk associated with cash transfer and cash uh, uh, disbursement in the local communities was mitigated since uh, the uh, financial service providers or uh, financial institutions are like uh, trusted organizations, people much uh, trust on this. Also, they have uh, uh, like uh, uh, specific uh, uh, well established address, uh, uh, address. So the risk is very limited. Uh, while uh, uh, using the other mediums like Hawala, like uh, MSP, many service providers, or individuals who are carrying money to the local communities, uh, the, they also uh, they are prone to a high risk. Uh, the the speed of the the service delivery the speed of the cash distribution to the local communities and the people was another uh, like uh, positive impact uh, we we we, uh, we had for, through uh, uh, like uh, digital payments and the uh, manual procedures for MSPs organizations like here uh, I believe others also do uh, we had to go for a weekly competitive bidding process to identify. MSPs for transferring cash to the provinces and doing the distribution to the communities. But while doing digitization, we had one time agreement uh, with the financial institutions, then based on some email exchange and click of uh, like uh, computer, which uh, since transfers and the data, the, the procedure was like uh, very like uh, short and uh, not the time taking or time consuming process. Uh, overall, the experience, the lessons we learned from digitization, it was uh, uh, quite useful and very like uh, uh, helpful uh, as well as uh, accepted by communities and by uh, our stakeholders. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tahir, for that. Uh, so we heard uh, some of uh, key, uh, key, uh, key words, database management, right? Uh, transparency, reducing the risk of the transfers, uh, mitigated the speed, um, and, and, and then a, a, a more um, straightforward process all the way if you want. Those are wonderful things. Thank you so much. Now let's go. A very uh, and ask uh, a very similar question to um, Danish Refugee Council. So I'd like to um, to hear. Uh, so so in your case, uh, you were able to transfer or to digitize cash transfers of sixty five thousand um, dollars, and then to one hundred and sixty nine different beneficiaries. Right uh, of them, twenty four percent were women. Um, tell me, how were this? And, and I mean, and I know that, like care, for example, you have many other things, uh, many other projects that are you are running in Afghanistan, right? And so, how were the solutions that you were able to test in some cases or use for the first time in this, uh, in some cases, better or not, in comparison to other delivery channels that you have used in the past? Um, so, Hikmatula, the floor is yours. 
Thank you very much and good morning to all of you once again. Uh, <coughs> so I will start my video. Now I have got the permission. Thank you very much. What? Uh, uh, be as a DRC, we were uh, a key partner of the Abadi in 2022. So we have implemented a number of uh, activities and contributed to the overall goals and objective of the Abadi. Uh, coming to your question, uh, for us, the, the digital payment to our beneficiaries, it was uh, 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 compared to other, other services we are uh, using and utilizing, it was quick, uh, uh, it was simple, and uh, the registration process, beneficiary registration process, it was very easy, uh, no photo was required, uh, uh, no biometrics and others. Uh, and our each beneficiary was having like a unique uh, QR code, so uh, that uh, was making our, our work easy. Uh, it was uh, the services provider uh, was friendly, uh, there was friendly customer service and uh, they were very cooperative and uh, they have uh, provided uh, trainings to, to our DRC colleagues as well as to our beneficiaries. And based on our request, they have provided a refresher training to our beneficiaries, uh, our beneficiaries as well, um, because they were mostly uh, the cash forward beneficiaries were mostly illiterate. So they have provided the refresher training based on our request as well. Uh, our experience uh, shows that e-cash is more safer than physical cash. And uh, also we have found that the, the trust is increasing on e-cash system, uh, but, but, but as we have seen that the, in the first month we were receiving money calls from our cash for work beneficiaries that when uh, we will receive our payment, how we will receive, either we will receive it or not through this system. But later on in the second month, in third month, or in the second installment, in third ins installment, they have, uh, uh, the, the trust was increased. Uh, for us, it was uh, cost effective as well because they have charged us one uh, percent, which is uh, less, more or less than, than other services provider. And uh, there was a very redu uh, redu uh, reduction on the documentation as well because we have uh, um, uh, very less documents and and we have not uh, got the fingerprints uh, of receiving the amount from each of the, our beneficiaries as we are doing with other services provider. So it was, there was less documents. These were some of the good practices or, or success stories we have uh, found and we have experience with the, with the digital uh, payment services provider. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Igmatula. So I hear very good uh, things about, for example, uh, other types of delivery channels, the QR code, right? Um, also, some very good attributes. If you, if I can tell them, uh, name them like that about the um, the the partner, the financial service provider that partner with you, which I believe is Hesape, right? Uh, about the re refresher trading on financial right. literacy directly to the beneficiaries, which is actually key uh, when it comes to uh, making these transfers, in particular for women. So that's great. Um, then also, uh, you mentioned trust, right? Um, and, and, and this is very important because we know that, um, although, I mean, I mean, we know that most of the, the transfers, uh, uh, are done in Afghanistan and they have, um, provided, a, an amazing service, a, a service throughout the years. And this is, uh, from the Hawala summit, but we also know that there are risks associated with, uh, those, um, those payment providers. And so, but. But the trust that some people have in them, I would say, is one of the key uh, reasons why people keep on using them, right? And so it's very interesting how when you are um, making these payments, uh, you need to really make sure that the financial service provider you're doing it with is able to gain that trust. That trust that your payment is actually going to be there that trust that is going to be uh, received, that trust around um, around that cash that is so important for them. So why don't you tell me a little bit about that? How did I, that go and why, why do you think um, the, the provider was able to build that trust with the beneficiaries of um, DRC? Over. 
Yes, uh, uh, because uh, the, our mostly the beneficiaries they are familiar with other uh, with other uh, method of cash payments. If they are not received their sales, maybe some of their uh, community members have received from different projects when when they were working there or when they were the beneficiary of those projects. But with the digital payment. I think our beneficiaries, they were not familiar with that. So since we were working in a very remote areas and most of our beneficiaries, especially the cash forward beneficiaries, they were illiterate people. So uh, in, when in the training, uh, when, when the, our service provider told them that uh, you will receive a message through your mobile phone and after that you will receive your amount, and uh, they, they were not trusting basically on that. They were asking us and our staff more questions during the month that how we will receive. Mm -hmm. But once they received it on, on, the, on their first month and then in the second month, we were not receiving that much calls. We were not receiving that much questions. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 it built it up in the third month as well. So the trust, uh, our experience shows that, uh, that people are trusting on that. But uh, there is need for more awareness and many other challenges we, uh, we we have faced. We will we will speak about it. We will talk about it. You know, maybe in next uh, uh, questions you are yes. arising. So there mm -hmm. are a number of uh, challenges as well. But what we have found that the trust is building on uh, on on this system. Thank you, Ikmatula. And that's actually a very nice segue to my next question, which is actually for both um you and um and care and, and which is about those challenges um that both of you face during this um this pilot so yeah i mean we know about uh, some of the main constraints when it comes uh about digital payments that i mentioned some of the beginning the, the lack of id you touch upon those uh documents for example under the re reduction of documents the lack of network or the insufficient network lack of financial literacy etc but uh i'd like to hear from you what what were those main challenges that you um that you encounter and if you want may i maybe ask uh muhammad to to start over to you muhammad Thank you very much. As you mentioned, uh, the main challenges were well, one of them, like uh, lack of legal ID and uh, local communities, most of the people lacking the national ID card. So when we are opening a bank account or uh, a token for them, we need uh, uh, a uh, uh, national ID or an identity of the beneficiaries. So uh, we had improvement as well. So through community elders, through the like uh, awareness seasons, uh, uh, we encourage people to get, obtain uh, national ID uh, to have their identity. Also, uh, law education or high rate of illiteracy, uh, lack of awareness about the banking system, uh, digital payment. This was another challenge. People were hesitant to uh, like. Uh, take part uh, uh, in this. We had multiple uh, seasons, awareness raising seasons uh, for, for this. Uh, our uh, colleagues from financial institutions as well as our uh, regional team uh, provided them information for them. Uh, the digital payments are also not very suitable for the small number of beneficiaries. Uh, suppose in a village, if you have only 10 to 15 beneficiaries, uh, so the Operating costs will be very high for the financial institutions, so they are not really reluctant uh, to provide uh, those services. Uh, the, the network issue, like uh, poor connectivity, these, these are uh, these are the challenges uh, uh, we faced during the implementation of this pilot phase. Thank you. Thank you. I'm in, I mean, very interesting, all of all of them uh, and how you were able to maybe tackle some of them in particular uh, around ID, uh, doing awareness campaigns or the literacy one. I was in particularly um, uh, interested in the high operation costs of uh, for certain FSPs, right, uh, when it comes to reaching the extra mile, the last mile, right? Uh, uh, and, and I would uh, once we start the battle with the FSPs, I would like to uh, give them that question. Uh, to see how maybe in some time in some cases how um, digital may help them to reduce those costs or not and what what it would take for them to actually find that business case in the last mile to serve better those communities thank you for that now let's go 
to um, our colleague from um, Danish Refugee Council, Igmatula. Uh, you mentioned uh, some of the um, some of the um, challenges, but please, um, uh, what what were those main challenges that um, your organization faced? Yeah, uh, before uh, I came to the challenges and mention it specifically, I want to uh, say that the, the Hisape services uh, we have received, it's like uh, they are making uh, accounts for our beneficiaries and they are making it based on the mobile phone number the beneficiary have it. So mm -hmm. they are creating a QR code for each of, unique QR code for each of the beneficiaries and their accounts, so so there is no need actually for more documents and other things. The mobile number is sufficient, yeah? Uh, actually, we have been told at the in the start of the presentation by the, our partner, Hisape, that uh, there will be a lot of uh, money margins available in the market and many agents that our beneficiary can receive uh, their payments through those agents and margins, and also they can buy some commodities on, on a, a bit lower price than the market from, from those shops and from those margins. But what act, actually we have found that it's one not like that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no enough agents and margins in the targeted locations like we have uh, in uh, the uh, uh, beneficiaries in, in three locations of Kabul, Khaki Jabbar, Desad, and, and uh, we have uh, as well in the, uh, in the center area. So there was no uh, 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 enough margins. And on the day of distribution, one of their margins were going there to the field and he was distributing uh, the, the cash to, to our beneficiaries based on the messages these, they received. Uh, I think uh, we have found that uh, low literacy among uh, the cash for work beneficiaries, uh, uh, we have uh, challenged, uh, uh, we had a lot of challenge with this because there was low literacy. Uh, our cash for work beneficiaries are mostly illiterate people and, and they were not having more awareness on this, on this uh, system and, and they were not familiar much with them. Uh, as well as not only with Hisap Pay, but with all digital uh, payment uh, systems, they were not uh, uh, well aware of that. Uh, the, the next uh, challenge we had is some of our cash forward beneficiaries, especially in the remote areas, they were not having access to cell phones as well. So it was difficult for us to create uh, account for them. And then we, they were taking some of them, they were taking mobile phones from other of their relatives and, and they were finding a number and then we were creating account for them. Uh, there was an issue with the implementation as well, loss of SIM cards from our beneficiaries. Some of our beneficiaries, they were not taking care of their SIM cards and they were losing those SIM cards. So the message was coming to them and they were not able to show it to the merchant and to receive their amount. So this was a challenge for us. Hmm. And also uh, there was, uh, in some areas, there was network problem. Some of the beneficiaries didn't receive the message, but in some areas, uh, there was no network problem, uh, but some beneficiaries, like 5% of our beneficiaries, didn't receive the message uh, from the services provider from Hisape. Uh, and also, uh, th these were some of the main challenges uh, we have uh, uh, faced during the, the pilot. Okay, no, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Um... You, you mentioned that uh, some beneficiaries didn't have um, the, the cell phone. If you can keep your, 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 your video on, that would be great. And, and, and so uh, what, what would you say with the percentage of beneficiaries without a cell phone? This is very, very uh, interesting and, and definitely one of the main parts as well. Uh, yeah, it's less, it's 5%, it's a very less percentage, but okay. since it was a challenge for us because uh, those beneficiaries didn't have cell phones mm -hmm. as well as the SIM card. Right. And it's very necessary and, and uh, essential for, for Hisape 
because they are creating the account on their mobile phones. Mm. So if there is no mobile phone, it means they, 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 they are not able to create account for them. We have found some solutions for them uh, locally. Uh, we have asked them to, to find a SIM card of their relatives or, or, or their family member. And, and then we were creating account for them. But mm. it was a challenge. And I think it's a challenge since for, for in the rural area, in the remote areas, and uh, because some of the uh, people, they are uh, poor people, they don't use uh, mobile phones. So hmm. it's a challenge, yeah. And I mean, I, I, would, just, I, I, would, I would reckon that um, no matter the delivery channel that you use, there is a lot of handholding from, uh, from the INGO, from Danish uh, council with the beneficiaries, right? Uh, now, if you compare it, right, to the handholding that your staff, your team used to do with beneficiaries, um, with other types of delivery channels of, uh, of the cash, uh, I mean, how would, how would that balance at the end would be in terms of uh, the amount of work that had to go from your team to make this happen? Yeah, we are facing challenges with other services provider as well, like with Hawala, we are mostly using Hawala services. So we are facing many challenges with them as well. They are sometimes not coming on time, mm -hmm. not reaching on time, beneficiaries are waiting for, for them. They are, for example, sometime rejecting our call, saying that, mm -hmm. no, we cannot pay on this day and many more. But uh, uh, yeah, of course, there are many good things with Hisab Pay, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. Those challenges and, and uh, things uh, and problems which we have faced, we are raising it, uh, that there are ways or, yeah. or we can we can find ways for, for solution and make it. There are many good things with this Hisab Pay. It's transparent, it, it's effective, it's efficient, and, 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 and uh, uh, it's easy for us as well, though mm. also uh, I can say that uh, it, it was a bit difficult for us as a DRC internally as well, yeah, because yeah, yeah. we were internally uh, not familiar with this system, yeah, how to, to, to there was, uh, of course, we had some documents, yeah. and we had some guidelines for this, and we have established and created but uh, and there was some meeting minutes and email communication that how we can proceed with internally uh, the program team with finance and with others. Uh, but uh, there is also a need that I have uh, mentioned, uh, I have uh, pointed out in my office as well that there is also need for us to to develop uh, and strengthen and and more uh, capacity. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Internally make some some sort of uh, comprehensive issues yeah. for. That. So uh, the first man, my experience is the first man was very challenging for us, mm. uh, as I mentioned the challenges, but later on in the second month and third month, we have uh, come up with, with less challenges. There was okay. less challenges. And one thing I want to mention it, and it was uh, very interesting for me as well. Our families, uh, female beneficiaries, we didn't had, you know, if I say we didn't had a single problem with receiving of their payments, uh, it, it's true. Okay. Uh, because they were the business beneficiaries, uh, mm -hmm. they were involved in business and they were receiving business grants and they were mostly literate somehow and they were um, uh, familiar with market and with these systems. Uh, we didn't receive any complaint from them. There were around 44 female beneficiaries and they mm -hmm. were in the city, in the city mm -hmm. of Kabul. They were not in remote areas. So we didn't receive any any complaint any any uh, with their payments process, but with male beneficiaries, cash for work beneficiaries, those living in remote areas, the illiterate people, and those living uh, uh, those uh, don't have much awareness, we we were having lots of problem with them. But those problem reduced each month, so uh, mm. it means that with there was progress. And well, also, no. I want to mention that the cooperation and coordination between us and Hisab Bay, it was very essential and, vital, and played a vital role in solving this problem. They, they were very cooperative with us, mm -hmm. communicating very well, and, and they were responsive every time. No, so, that's, so, yeah. that's great. No, thank you so much for raising uh, and for sharing those things. I, I, I do think that uh, there are so many, I mean, as, as I heard, uh, turn on your video so I can talk to 
to you all the time. <laughs> so maybe as time goes uh, goes uh, progress, right? Those challenges uh, will definitely uh, be less and less. There are some challenges that are um, could be addressed uh, by maybe increasing and working more closely with the beneficiaries, in particular around building their digital and financial capabilities. But there are some others. Um, as as you rightly mentioned, uh, for example, that um, that digital ecosystem that is still not there uh, that needs to be uh, we need to address either um, the provider has that pay or together so that there is more and more uh, possibilities for people to actually use their uh, money in in a digital way. Um, with that, also, I mean, uh, I mean, uh, glad to hear that um, that women in uh, seem to be more, um, um, or, or 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 you 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 experience less uh, challenges uh, with the women, perhaps because of the uh, where uh, they were living closer to Kabul, they were more aware, etc. But uh, it's also very important to uh, dig. Uh, further into that sometimes women might not have the right agency to go and complain about it and what they, they didn't like it or not uh so that's also uh something um in the future to to keep always uh those the, the needs of the clients at the center and keep on improving and see how we can better serve them that's great uh so now let's go maybe with this uh, and i think there are some very good questions and follow up things for our colleagues from the FSP side. Um, so uh, let's let me start with ISB. Uh, so I have uh, from ISB uh, Nusra uh, Rahim. Uh, so please, um, for so for for the pilot, if you can if you can please uh, turn on your video, Nusra. Um, so for the pilot, uh, you and correct me if I'm wrong, but I do understand that you use prepare prepaid prepaid cards, sorry, uh, but also vouchers. And if you can please uh, uh, project the, the, the slides so that people can see uh, the different delivery channels, etc. So prepaid cards and, um, and, and vouchers. Um, and, and so I, I, I would say that uh, arguably uh, a person, a beneficiary needs uh, obviously to use, um, I mean, to have a bank account to use uh, any kind of these uh, delivery channels. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, uh, very briefly, uh, about the delivery channel that you used and, and, and let's, uh, let's may, uh, pretend that I'm like a beneficiary in somewhere in Badakhshan, for example, what would that, that, what's that consumer experience for me? What, what, what's that consumer journey or client journey that I have to go through to use that specific uh, delivery channel that you use uh, in the pilot with care? Over to you. What, what, what do I need uh, to receive my cash? <laughs> Over. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Maria. First of all, uh, accept my apology for the technical issues that I was unable to um, uh, connect sooner. Uh, so though we have prepared a presentation also, uh, I'm not sure that you guys have uh, uh, No, no worries. No worries. Okay. We decided okay. to do it a, a more conversational type of uh, webinar so that uh, okay. people okay. would be more okay. engaged. Okay. So, yes. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. Uh, first of all, it's not prepaid cards. Uh, there's a difference between prepaid cards and debit cards. We used uh, debit cards. Uh, they are same like ATM cards. Yeah. Uh, we, um, uh, uh, about the experience, as you asked, uh, we did. Uh, uh, we received the pilot project from care international uh, i think they are one of the partners of uh, un uh, undp so the um, uh, location was karabakh district of uh, ghazni province actually it's a uh, remote district of it's about uh, um, uh, one hour or one uh, about uh, 50 or 45 kilometers from ghazni uh, so uh, it was our first experience and it was a challenging uh, issue for us, but the UNDP and the Care International Day uh, insist to, uh, for the purpose of familiarizing the beneficiaries with banking products and services and uh, uh, familiarizing them with the digitization uh, and, uh, you know, awareness. Uh, they have to be, uh, we should create accounts for them and issue uh, ATM or debit cards uh, for them. So it was a challenging um, issue for us. So we required some data from the Care International, though um, it was difficult for them to acquire the, to meet our KYC uh, requirements. 
uh, as you know the account opening uh, process uh, beneficiary or a person who is opening account he sh he or she should be available uh, at the specific branch so uh, we can acquire his or her uh, id number uh, picture sign uh, 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 tin number and these uh, but uh, uh, at that time we only receive the name father name and telephone number of oh sorry and tazkira number of uh, the beneficiaries so uh, we did uh, we work around uh, to complete the kyc requirements we opened um, uh, the accounts here and linked the debit cards with those accounts and uh, then we sent those forms to the um, uh, district to the uh, point of withdrawal we asked the care to please coordinate with us and um, uh, uh, ask the beneficiaries to come a uh, day or two before the uh, uh, this uh, disbursement so we can complete the kyc requirement so there after completion of uh, taking their photographs and um, uh, taking their thumb impressions or signatures on the account opening form cifs and uh, we handed over the uh, debit cards to them and also the account cards to them so after uh, uh, completion of the kyc uh, it was their first experience to be honest uh, they were not familiar with the banking uh, services with the um, digitization services so uh, uh, they feel somehow happy that i am uh, you know uh, uh, for the last 20 or 25 or 30 years i did not know about bank i know the bank um, for example for a person who is not aware of uh, the banking product and services they think that bank is the place where you can keep the money and they have a big large room and they're keeping the money over there they're just you know um, uh, for safekeeping so they we just gave them a brief uh, introduction of uh, banking and product and services part of our customer service and uh, for the purpose of uh, awareness so we just um, uh, delivered the 200 uh, bank account cards and uh, the debit cards to those beneficiaries uh, a few days before uh, the Ken Rental, we um, uh, devised a plan uh, that tomorrow, day after tomorrow, we will uh, go to the beneficiary and we disperse the funds. So we, uh, at that time, uh, it was our first experience, as I mentioned before, uh, that we did not have agency banking. We were not, uh, you know, using pause devices. We asked a third party to work on our behalf because the account were opened, the debit card were, you know, um, uh, issued, uh, the ATM card. Uh, so we uh, required that the third party to please, uh, you know, uh, we uh, paid them a, a fee. So they went to the area, we provided them with cash, and they had to swipe the card in the pause devices. And the pause device, um, uh, they, uh, it, it would print two vouchers, one for the beneficiary and uh, one for the um, uh, agent. So uh, after uh, printing two vouchers, uh, the account was uh, account would be uh, debited um, automatically, and uh, the, we we would pay uh, physical cash to, to the beneficiary, and uh, this was the procedure. And after that, after completion of that pilot project, we come to know that uh, it's a good uh, thing to digitize uh, Afghanistan because as a bank we had uh, resources. So after that. Uh, we uh, told uh, we uh, you know uh, hold a brief session of uh, training with the coordination of uh, care uh, partners uh, and uh, tell uh, told those beneficiaries about uh, the banking the digitization the product and services of bank and its significant role on uh, the economy of the country because as you um, uh, are well aware that Afghanistan is a country uh, which is you know war driven country for the last 45 years so the banking uh, sector has been you know struggling from the last 20 years the banks uh, have been developed so much but not to that that extent which which is being required because because of a lot of issues the people know the bank there is a bank but they don't trust the bank because you know the mindset you have to create a mindset uh, uh, for the general public only the business people uh, the people living in the cities they are familiar with the banking sector they are familiar with the um, uh, you know uh, product and services uh, even though those are businessmen, uh, they only know, for example, if a businessman, he's doing a telegraphic transfer uh, and he's, you know, importing, some, importing something from uh, abroad, he just know about his specific product. But we gave them the beneficiaries, so since they were all the people from village, from the districts, from um, uh, rural area, they were not, we gave them a brief introduction about banking and services. And we told them that these accounts are created for you and you guys can utilize these accounts anytime for example if you have surplus cash if you are you know selling your crops or you, you have uh, cash you can deposit it in your account and you can take the funds from your atm for uh, from atm and no. you can visit our branch 
that, that, that's great. No, thank you so much for that. And maybe a couple of follow-up questions very quickly so that I have time Please. to go to my other two panelists. Um, um, one is around, okay, so so you you have 384 uh, branches. So I would assume- uh, No, 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 uh, let, let me, let me, uh, sorry, sorry, Maya, uh, let me, uh, you know, uh, uh, correct you here. Uh, after the completion of that project, uh, we did not have agency banking. Our branches are, you know, we are present in all the provinces, uh, okay. but after that, we started our own agency banking at Got it. We purchased, we purchased our POS devices. We spread our. So you're agent doing this now. through agents. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. How many agents do we have right now? We have uh, 200 agents uh, who are currently our staff, also female included, and we have 80 uh, more agents. Uh, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, the zonal uh, branches they are waiting for example we are getting any project we mm -hmm. are just calling them they are you know uh, on contract basis and so with these pos uh, point of services right or pos devices um yeah. how, how or what what type of channel uh, or what type of um challenge did you have uh okay we we face uh, a few challenges uh, first of all uh, as we said that uh, digital liter literacy yeah. the people of avansan they are you know as i said before that they are you know uh, away from the education away from the digitalization uh, that's they are, good uh, but yeah. let's uh, the digital literacy but how about connectivity yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, we did uh, at, as our first pilot project. Uh, we did mm -hmm. with a third party. We did we did not uh, do that test transaction in that okay. uh, area. The okay. MNOs you know, in some areas there are issues, but we devised to work around with these problem. In some areas, we, recently we had a project in Lagman province. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, uh, between the project, the signals were dropped. The network, okay. the reliability were not uh, so. We uh, we derived to devise two solutions for that issue. First of all, we um, uh, freeze the accounts of those beneficiaries because accounts were created initially. We freeze the accounts for them and we uh, pay them uh, physical cash. Okay. Uh, so we can later on we can you know debit their accounts. And the okay. second uh, uh, we it was faced by us. And the second we uh, discussed the issue with our uh, uh, vendor, with our uh, you know partner who is you know providing the service, and they are working for offline solution for us. Okay. So okay, we are working. Great. We have a solution for that. Okay, that's great. Thank you so much. Those are great. So with that, I want to go now to Empaisa, right? Um, and also uh, uh, ask them a little bit about their experience uh, during uh, this pilot. And so with that, I'll give the floor to Sharif. Please tell us about a little bit, um, again, what, what was the, that, that delivery channel and that you used for the pilot? Uh, how was it received by the beneficiaries? Um, and, and if I am a client in a very remote area of Afghanistan, what would that, what, what, what that experience would be for, uh, for me, like for me, sorry, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Maria. Yeah. Uh, in respect to the MPS, I have to say that MPS has an experience of 14 years, mm -hmm. uh, on the e-wallet or, uh, M-commerce. Mm -hmm. We have uh, we have this service uh, since the starting of the Impesa from 2008, which established by Russian telecommunication mm -hmm. company. Yeah, coming to the pilot project, uh, looking forward to the time you said. So in the pilot project, uh, actually we in Paisa, we have uh, distributed around seven seven thousand beneficiaries uh, in six district uh, of Badakhshan, with having around seventeen villages in the Badakhshan. So so far, areas locations where there even the snow is is fully uh, covered at the locations. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, looking forward to that. We we have had challenges. Uh, but but having our past experience with M-Pesa, which M-Pesa we can tell is simple, it's secure, it is uh, pen protected, and uh, uh, we are transparent. the The transactions are fully law, uh, fully traceable, and it is fast. It's quick and fast, and also it fights the corruption. Mm -hmm. Full payments are transferred uh, without having a middleman, for example. So, mm -hmm. 
looking forward to this. Uh, we we have done our our distribution at these uh, locations, and also uh, the way we have done is that. Of course, while it comes to the EMI and uh, mobile number is must. So we have on it, uh, we have on it numbers, which is Russian number, and we can use an off net number, which is the other subscribe other uh, networks uh, subscribers or users. So at the how, location, yeah. yeah. How do you account for, for challenges uh, like um, lower levels of financial literacy? In the, in the same in in the in the product itself or in um in the interaction with the agents how how does Mpesa goes about that? Mpesa. Mpesa uh, while we start the uh, the disbursement actually we have the well trained uh, agents in all locations uh around eleven 1 hundred agents are there uh in, in rural Afghanistan and we are mm -hmm. having fixed agenda 271 districts of Afghanistan. So these agents are well-trained and though before dispersing or be, before distribution of the cash, we do uh, have a training session for the beneficiaries whether the, the uh, agents shows mm. uh, and trains the beneficiaries how to use mobile, how to use the number and how to use the uh, wallet base okay. in order to, to do transactions. Okay, thank you so much. Maybe I'll, I'll go to Hisape. Um and Hisape, uh, N N N Nigel. <laughs> I keep on calling you Nigel. Uh, so, um, very briefly for those in the in the audience who do not know about the main attributes of Hisape, what does that journey uh, using Hisape mean for a client of Hisape, a beneficiary of this uh, pilot? Over. Hi, thanks, Maria. So yes, for, for anybody who isn't familiar with Hisab Pay, Hisab Pay is an interoperable digital payments platform in Afghanistan. So you can send digital apps to any phone number in Afghanistan and any phone number can open an account. If you have a smartphone, you can download the, the app from the, the Android or the Play Store and you can set up an account very simply. If you have a feature phone, you can also open an account and it'll be paired with a QR code card and that card will be scanned by a merchant or agent when you're doing a transaction with them. And then you will approve that transaction using a one-time password that's sent to you by SMS for that specific transaction. So that's how the security is managed. So we're integrated with uh, you know, all, the, all the major banks, the payment utilities. You can buy airtime. There's a, a call center. And right now we have 330,000 active wallets, 3,000 agents. And since uh, November of 21, when we opened, we processed about 4 million transactions. The largest area of growth for Hisab Pay right now is payment of electric bills nationally. So a year ago, we paid 2,000 bills through the system. This month, we paid 80,000 bills in the month of April, sorry, last month now. Uh, so the growth in the system and the trust is increasing, increasing dramatically. So that's that's the very basics of Hisab. They send digital apps to any phone number in Afghanistan, smartphone or feature phone. Right, exactly. But you do the, the, the minimum, the critical minimum is a mobile money account, right? You get a you get a basic digital wallet in which you can have digital apps that you can spend with merchants or you can cash mm -hmm. out. Okay, great. Um, and and we all along this webinar we we heard about some of the attributes of Kesape that were most uh, appreciated from the INGOs. For example, um, the ease on the documentation that are that were was needed to open an account with Kesape and being able to include. The beneficiaries, for example, also um, the efforts around building together financial and digital capabilities uh, for the for the clients. But we also heard about um, that that if you want that, I mean, obviously, if you have a, a product or <coughs> like a stat pay, um, and as as in, in any any in any digital uh, payment product, by the way, is not only uh, for Hesape, but the bigger your digital ecosystem is, 
the more possibilities you as a user of that digital payment will have, right? So you are not only using that specific um, channel to receive a payment, but you're also using it if the ecosystem allows it to uh, make, uh, to purchase something in a store, etc. How are you um, dealing with that specific channel uh, challenge? Sorry, of of the lack of a digital ecosystem in Afghanistan, and how are you contributing to address that challenge? Yeah, so to come to a, a number of your a number of your questions. So f first, about the sort of the ease of working with the system. So I, I think one thing that we've really focused on is we've implemented a tiered KYC. So as a humanitarian organization, we will accept your verification of an individual for an account without requirements for photos and, and uh, ID requirements, allowing a capability in that wallet of up to $500 a month based mm -hmm. on the attestation of the NGO, the UN agency saying this person is who they say they are. Mm -hmm. Those, that person can then verify their account if they want and go through. So I think that really simplifies the process and also reduces some of the risks around data. Mm -hmm. You know, we can talk about payments through a portal, an enterprise account. They make payments to the beneficiaries themselves. So Subpay didn't do it for them. Okay. So I think that and the ability to generate receipts instantly and reports instantly to reconcile with your finance team has proved, you know, there's no paper going to the field, the yeah. thumbprint, taking it back to the office, reconciling everything, greatly simplified. Yeah. And then when it comes to building the ecosystem, I think there's sort of there's a, a couple of key points to, to think about. I think the first is, and this, this came up for a number of people, that if we use digital payments for one-off cash transfers as a humanitarian development community you know that's maybe not the uh, doesn't necessarily uh pay off in terms of the investment of time and effort of in course. building the trust that was discussed and building the digital and the financial literacy mm -hmm. the benefits really come with repeat payments mm -hmm. and so i think this is something for the humanitarian community to think about if you if you're planning repeat payments to certain individuals you are going to have that slightly more labor intensive time intensive upfront energy effort cost in in doing the requisite amount of training and uh trust building but then the subsequent payments month after month as trust grows familiarity Economies grows of scale. it gets <laughs> much much easier and the costs yeah. come way down and it's it, the, the benefits sort of expand exponentially down the road, but you have mm -hmm. to be prepared to invest that, that effort up front. I think the other thing is, um, I know this, uh, uh, this, this uh, webinar has been, you know, to talk about digit, last mile digital payments. But I think the experience from other countries is that where, where efficient digital ecosystems, digital payments ecosystems build, they don't start with trying to solve the last mile solution. Mm. They work in areas of high economic activity where right. there are vibrant two-sided markets, where there's a lot of economic activity that can be digitized. And so you can put a lot of wallets and a lot of purchasing power in the hands of recipients. And then there's a lot of agent merchant density in that area. So I think that as a broader community, you know, while obviously digital payments are attractive to try and solve last mile solutions, we should also be considering digital payments in more dense urban, peri-urban areas because there are a lot of benefits will come. And then those benefits experienced globally will tell us will improve the infrastructure and the ecosystem in the rural areas more effectively than focusing purely on the rural remote locations and ignoring the urban. No, absolutely. And 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 what you said about those, I mean, economies of scale uh, and 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 building that business case, if you want, uh, and using these cash transfers as a start to build that business case for digital payments, I think is key, and uh, in a way um, will help us to further de risk those uh, innovations in the last mile, because it, it is true when I, I remember, I, I think was um, the, um, the colleague from, K, from DRC, if I'm not, or from CARE, 
that um who mentioned the, the I mean the, the, the biggest challenge was like okay let's go to the this village but uh, the FSPs don't want to go there so how do we nudge them to go there right and so there's a lot of uh, things in place that could be uh, done in order to uh, do that. Now, last last thing, Nigel, Nigel, oh, Dios mío. Uh, <laughs> if you can please just very briefly touch upon two of the um, uh, initiatives that we are embarking on. One is the USDC uh, pilot, uh, which is basically trying to use other digital rails. Uh, for digital payments uh, in Afghanistan and uh, bringing in that money. And then another one is our work on data um, insights, uh, analytics, uh, and how and why do you think that's important uh, and what kind of value can that bring uh, to these types of initiatives over? Yeah, thank you, Maria. Um, I, I did prepare a flow of funds slide. I don't know if it's in the deck that's available, but it might be for the USDC. It might make it easier to explain what that is very briefly. If that's possible to show, if not, I'll, okay. I'll just talk so, it through. You know what? What I put my act together on that. Why don't you start with the with the data part and then I, I go to that one. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. good. So uh through the kind introduction of UNCDF, we've uh, at Hasab Pay we're partnering with a, a, a data science uh, consultancy, but pro bono consultancy called Data Kind, and we are in the process of working with them to really unpack Hasab Pay's data to better understand the nature of our users, customers, agents. So that you know, there's a there's a huge amount of rich data. As I said, we've got more than four million transactions. We've got a massive amount of data about who our recipients are, what type of devices, their locations, etc. But we don't always take the greatest advantage of that. So we're we're partnering with Data Kind, who's got a, a few amazing data scientists from elsewhere in the world, and they're going to be partnering with our team in Kabul to really dig into our data and, and understand it and help us use that to refine products and services in, in Afghanistan. Good, and I think we found one. So please, um, Georg is gonna to start to, um, to um, show that slide so that you can talk about the USDC pilot very briefly. You okay. Yeah. So, uh, so USDC is a uh, fully reserved US dollar stable coin. So, one USDC always equals uh, one uh, US dollar. And so, I've uh, I put a simple flow of funds here. So, uh, Hisab Pay is built on the uh, Algorand blockchain, which means that we uh, can use uh, these these additional types of features, such as the ability to to transmit stable coins. So um, as you can see, this first step in this process is that uh, Norwegian Church Aid receives regular fiat currency, US dollars into their bank account uh, in, their, in their headquarters. They have then opened an account with Circle Financial, who you see on the left-hand side, uh, and they've gone through a process with Circle, and they purchase, using their US dollars, they purchase USDC from Circle, which immediately enters their uh, Circle account as USDC. So they transfer $100,000, they receive 100,000 USDC in, um, in their digital wallet. They then, from their Circle account, are able to disperse those funds directly in uh, USDC to their recipients, his subpay wallets in Afghanistan. So this happens, you know, this the, the transfer from the circle wallet to the recipient wallet it settles on, on the blockchain in about three and a half, four seconds. And immediately those funds are now sitting in, in the, the recipient's wallets. The recipients in this particular project are, are 60 women uh, who are, are uh, small business women in Badakhshan. And so in their wallets, and we will have trained them on, on how to use them, they will receive these funds. They then can choose what to do with their funds. They can either within the app, they can convert them to uh, Afghanis and they can spend them digitally with, within the merchant acceptance network or cash them out as AFs if they want. Or they can cash out their 
USDC with Hisab Pay or MoneyGram. We are in the process of finalizing our integration with MoneyGram within the app. And so they can go to any MoneyGram agents. And I, I believe there's colleagues from AUB on the um on the call. And you know, we're through through that uh network with, with MoneyGram for cash out. And then settlement happens very simply between Hisab Pay and the agents for any digital AF purchases, and then for um you know, between MoneyGram and Hassab Pay with Circle for any any USDC to fiat settlement. So this is just a small pilot. We're not releasing this to our, 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 our users as we're you know we're just in the process of testing this. But as you can imagine, this uh, offers a, a huge number of advantages to uh, to the to the community. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Nigel. And just one more question uh, before we close very quickly to every uh, participant. Um, so in, in your opinion, if you can say just two things, two of the most pressing things that your organization need um, that will help you scale up digital payments uh, in your interventions. Um, and so that would be for the INGOs and for the FSPs, uh, like what would be those, those most pressing needs that will help you scale up digital payments uh, across your clients and across the country. So if I can start with care, please, two things very quickly. Mohammed, where is Mohammed? Okay, so uh, let me start then um, with uh, Danish Refugee Council, Ikhmatula. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I think uh, uh, it's very important uh, to have a continued uh, commitment from donors, UN and other humanitarian agencies to educate uh, for this uh, digital payments and and we are observing this since uh, I, I have also received I was also a participant of a meeting in last month I think so this is another uh, webinar so there are support but uh, we need uh, I think uh, the continued commitment and support is required uh, also uh, I think uh, uh, increasing awareness uh, and trainings and orientations. Uh, it's also important uh, by, by, by different means, by radio, by television, by billboards, by other uh, uh, means. Uh, increasing awareness is also important. Mm -hmm. And also for organizations, I think uh, they need uh, to, to have uh, and develop a simplified SOPs uh, while working uh, with this uh, digital uh, services providers. So these are all from my side, the recommendation or things. Thank you so much. Uh, now uh, let's go to um, yeah, Tahir, please. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Mario. Sorry for there was an internet uh, interruption. Uh, we are planning under this. Uh, fortunately, we are uh, in a structured partnership with NDP. We are implementing our body too. So in our body, we are planning for 3,300 uh, uh, like levers, cash forward levers to uh, do the payment through digital payment system. As well as uh, we have around 1,000 like uh, MSMEs, women-led enterprises. The payment, to all of them will be through uh, digital payment systems. As uh, my colleagues from there they said, uh, uh, we, we do request uh, from our donors to support this process. This is a very good experience. Uh, we can uh, keep increasing uh, the awareness, the education of local communities about the bank banking system, financial institutions, and digital payment. Uh, this is a good practice uh, uh, regarding quality, regarding the speed, uh, risk uh, reduction, and uh, like uh, trust building among the communities. So we keep uh, using digital payment system. Uh, we'll scale up to not only for uh, UNDP funded already project, but also all projects is planning to do the digital payment. Thank you. Mohammed, thank you so much. Now let's go to the FSPs. Uh, ISB. From the perspective of the FSPs, what what would you what what is your most pressing needs to see uh, a digital ecosystem, a digital payments ecosystem, going up in Afghanistan, scaling up? Or... 
progressing. I think you're mute. Uh, uh, sorry, Maria, it's not ISB, it's IBA, Islamic Bank oh, of Afghanistan. Sorry, uh, I, I was confused. I was uh, thinking there was somebody else who is by the name of ISB. Sorry, sorry. Okay, 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 okay. It's, okay. it's okay, it's okay, no worries. Okay, first of all, as our uh, colleague from GRC said that um, uh, the issue, the main issue is of uh, awareness. Um, if uh, and uh, spreading or development of countrywide network of agents. It was also a slide in our presentation. Yeah. First of all, as uh, I said in our pilot project that we, uh, before uh, uh, commencing the project, we gave them a brief introduction of uh, regarding the digitization, the digital ecosystem and about the banking uh, system, mm. the banking product and services. You know, uh, the banking, uh, sorry, the digitization comes later than banking. First of all, yeah. we have to uh, make them aware about the banking product and services and the role it plays, the significant role it plays in the um, uh, economy of the country. Then we go to the uh, uh, digitization. So uh, after that, we just gave them a brief introduction about uh, the banking, then digitization. Then as uh, uh, I mentioned earlier, I think that we have devised a solution of uh, like our colleagues from uh, uh, this uh, ISAP asset, uh, you know, mm. wallets. We are uh, IT person of our wallet is already completed. Mm. Uh, we are, you know, uh, by the name of IP, we have all the features in that. So the first and the important thing is uh, awareness, spreading awareness through billboards, through training programs, through orientations, through workshops about the banking, the system, and the role it plays. After that, uh, first of all, you have to. Uh, for example, if you are, you, are, you are going to do a PhD, you have to do masters, you have to complete your bachelors. If a person who is not who is not complete, who has not completed his master's degree or bachelor's degree, and you are just uh, 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 telling him that to complete your thesis on a specific uh, uh, topic, uh, for example, my master's uh, thesis was uh, uh, the impact of psychological capital on employees' performance. For example, if I have to do this, I have to study about that. Hmm. The people, they are not aware of banking uh, and services. They just think that bank is a place, it's a huge room where hmm. they keep all the money. First, awareness should be spread about the banking. So then they mystify the, the mystifying exactly, financial exactly. services, uh, making them more accessible to the people. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Providing more value to them as well and, and see that and, and designing products and services that actually can exactly. help. Uh, individuals and businesses to um, to further advance their lives, right? So everything exactly. goes uh, okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, um, sorry, sorry yeah. Maria. Let me add. Uh, let uh, sorry, sorry. Uh, let me add. Uh, uh, we had a meeting uh, with a uh, Zoom a meeting with uh, World Bank uh, mm -hmm. a few days back. Um, uh, to be honest, um, I completely you know uh, completely agree with this uh, CBI cash based interventions, but in the long run these projects are not sustainable, to be honest. I mm -hmm. said the same thing to the World Bank colleagues. I said that we have to work on SMEs, MSMEs. We have to, you know, um, uh, Afghanistan is an agriculture country. Instead of providing them cash, um, for example, twice in a month or, you know, uh, monthly or after two months, instead of that, we can, you know, uh, microfinance, we can assist them in microfinance. Uh, the donor agencies like you and they can, you know, uh, give funds to the financial service providers, the banks, the commercial banks. This will have two impacts. The banks will, you know, it's uh, stabilized and we can, uh, you know, give loans, give uh, Sharia compliant, like we are Islamic mm -hmm. bank. We can give Sharia compliant products and services. For example, uh, we can, if a farmer has a land, he needs solar uh, so solar panels. We can procure solar panels for him. For him, we can procure a tractor for him. We can procure seeds from him for him. Yeah, so yeah. this will, you know, uh, make him uh, not reliable on the aid. Yeah, yeah. I th this is my, you know, uh, my personal views. No, and completely aligned, and that's also very much aligned with the vision of uh, UNDP uh, in the country as well, bringing that sustainable development uh, continuum, if you want. Um, and uh, and that's that's one of the reasons why we also embark uh, in together into this uh, joint program um, around the banking sector. And there are many more things coming up, many more things uh, to be done, um, addressing some other challenges. But that's definitely and be reassured that that's definitely um, a key 
uh, part of uh, what UNDP is doing in the country. And please, colleagues from UNDP, feel free to uh, cut me off or or jump if you wish. Uh, now let's go to, uh, before I have five more minutes, I have about five more minutes and I have to give the floor to Nigel and uh, Sharif. Sharif, please, over to you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Maria. Yeah, looking forward to these uh, aspects as uh, the uh, our 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 friend here has mentioned that mm. the, the digitalization can't lead. I have to say that looking forward to the financial inclusions. Have uh, looking for the mobile money operators in Afghanistan. Mostly people does have mobile mobile phones. Although we understand in some rural areas the people yeah. don't have mobile. But we have a uh, majority or most of the people that have mobile phones and they use the, the mobiles. Yeah. So the, the challenge was on the uh, lack of uh, having SIM cards or having ornate SIMs. Like uh, we, use, we, we have had some people who, who, who didn't have SIM cards of Roshan, which mm. we provided for them and also uh, there was no network of Russian but the solution we provided was that we use their off net or other other uh, mobile network operators to pay the uh, to pay the, the their their money via the wallets and also yes the the sim lost and also the KYC registrations was right. a challenge Okay, which is okay. uh which is fine we we find out alternative ways which were the second and third way the the normal cash out and the off net otp which uh, our our colleague from the uh, hisab has also said the otp one time password electronically was sent to the to the uh, any other national operator number by the user mm. and also then uh, at the last where there, there is no network of any national operator telecommunication right. operator that use the cash and voucher solution that was <clears throat> fair enough uh, to do and looking forward to the ecosystem yeah uh, i think uh, it needs uh, we we need to have some campaigns on the awareness on the uh, transaction based of having uh, ecosystem Although we have our merchants in some uh, big provinces, cities, mm. where the, the beneficiaries can use their, their wallet, can use their mobile on transaction or buying or selling uh, products. Thank you so, so much. Yeah. Okay. So that, that's, that's uh, other things I would like to add in the, in the, in the conversation. Thank you Thank very you. much, Sharif. Uh, Nigel, finally, I can... Hi, thanks, Maria. I mean, I, I think to, to be as brief as I can, I mean, I, I think there's a huge potential for scaling digital payments. You know, there's obviously Hassab Pay, but all the other colleagues and then other private sector providers that are either in the market or entering the market. Right. Competition is going to be good. And so I think there's a huge potential for scale. But I think it's important for the broader community to have a shared commitment to building the digital payments ecosystem because it won't grow overnight. And so I think that uh, shared commitment is going to realize benefits over the long run. Yeah, as we said, economies of scale will grow, efficiencies will grow, and benefits will grow over time. But we have to start and we have to have a commitment to it uh, for, a, for a period of time. Because what we really need to think about is, you know, on one hand, we want to build awareness and trust in digital payment systems, as, as colleagues have described. But the other thing, and what we've really seen elsewhere, that when digital payments ecosystems thrive, there's less and less cashing out. Yeah, people are spending money digitally. They're not just, we're not just using digital payments as a way to transmit paper money to be picked up from somewhere. And then all the commercial activity takes place with paper money. What we really want to stimulate is digital payments that continue to flow within the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And for that to happen, we need a long-term commitment and um and that's going to take some time thank you so much uh nigel and and with that i i do understand that um uh participants have been asking uh questions in the chat thank you very much for your questions my colleagues wally and Faisi have been answering them all along the, the the webinar i didn't want to stop our panelists because i think the the um, the discussion was so rich that I really wanted uh, to get the maximum. Now, having said that, I think this reckons a second webinar <laughs> where we can go deeper into 
uh, these discussions because I think there's a lot of, a lot more things to say. Um, with that, uh, we are still uh, doing a lot of work with UNDP. As uh, we mentioned, we are um, about to um, start that uh, a small pilot on USDC. Uh, also, this work on data, which is more um, around identifying these beneficiaries and their needs, uh, but else also many other things that are uh, probably coming up in the near future. And um, I mean, needless to say, I don't want to uh, repeat uh, some of the challenges that uh, we've had, uh, but but I think one of the biggest um, uh, hopes that I have with this with this uh, pilot is that, as I told you at the beginning, when uh, when we were asked to come together with UNDP in in this project, I was as many others. Uh, I mean, I don't know if uh, reluctant uh, if that I can use this word, but um, I had a lot of questions, and I and I think um, yes, it's been some challenges, some uh, some ways to uh, find solutions, as the panelists uh, have rightly pointed out. And I think if anything, it has helped us all to desmitify a lot of the things around digital payments in um, in Afghanistan without. Uh, taking out of sight that there are things, uh, a lot of work to do um, in terms of connectivity, uh, digital payment ecosystem, uh, growing that agents uh, to the uh, that net network, those networks of agents to the last mile, really working on the business case for financial services providers to really go um, and 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 be able to find it uh, in a more uh, and, and offer the service in a more uh, sustainable manner. Um, increase financial and digital capabilities of the population, make sure the products and services are really um, targeting or addressing the needs or the specific barriers of uh, women. A KYC requirements, maybe but the list is still um, quite, quite long. But, uh, but with that, I would just like to maybe um, conclude, uh, rectify, uh, I mean, not rectify, sorry, um, echoing the words of Nigel about this shared long-term commitment. Uh, and I'm proud and I'm very um, humble also to be able to um, to have joined forces with uh, UNDP because that also sh uh, shows that joint commitment of these organizations. Um, uh, and it's a, it's a long-term one. Um, more to come in this uh, digital payment and banking system um, program. Um, and um, I just want to thank you for all your participation. Uh, to the panelists, thank you so much for having taken the time uh, to prepare uh, to give everything that you gave during the pilots. It's been a pleasure working with you and we look forward to continue working together. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Maria. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you you thank did you. a great thank job. Looking much. forward for our next um, uh, webinar. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Soraya. Thank you so much, Bye -bye. colleagues.